All right, here we are, back with episode four of our Madara series, where we're going to be painting Remy Moretti. Full disclosure, this was not an easy model to paint, and it took a lot of time. This is a little bit longer video, but if you really want a decent looking miniature to go onto the board game table, then follow this. If this is your first time at the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, follow us on Instagram at nerd.nights, do the whole shebang shebang. We got more stuff coming, so don't miss out. But without further ado, let's go. Obviously, the first thing we're going to do is scrape off all those nasty mold lines. Now, there is a lot on these models, specifically for Madara. And this has been my number one complaint about Madara miniatures is the mold lines and the quality of the miniatures. Kind of meh, without saying. Anyways, we're going to do a zenithal highlighting, black and a spray of white from above, and this is what it will look like. Once we are done with our zenithal highlighting and his dry, we're gonna take some Nolan oil and we're gonna use it on some of our wings to basically brighten out or bring out the lines in the mold. Once we're done with the Nolan oil, we're gonna take some Agrax Earthshade and we're basically gonna do the th same thing, except we're gonna kind of focus on the middle of our wings compared to the Nolan oil, which is gonna drip down to the bottom. So we're focusing on the middle. Next, we are gonna take some Skeleton Horde, which is a contrast paint from Citadel, and we're gonna try and two-tone those together. Basically, this is gonna be our base paint with the Zenithal spray paint we already did to basically get the base coat we need to start building up our highlights with some other colors. I know it's kind of weird, but I'm doing this kind of unorthodox, so just follow along. Next, we're gonna take a dry brush of Prexetti White and we're gonna hit the tops of our wings. And we are strictly following the card art with this, so we are trying to match it as best as we can. So if you don't like this color scheme, it's not a big deal, but this is just what I'm doing to try and match the card art. Once we have done that dry brush, we are gonna take some Talarin Sand 50-50 with some Lamia Medium and we're gonna start hitting up those wings. And this is gonna start building up our layers of paint we're gonna to use to kinda of get it all together. It's gonna to look like crap at first, but the more we're doing it and the more layers we're doing with this and with other colors, it'll look a lot better, trust me. So obviously we're focusing on the lower portion of our wings, picking out the wing little segments. Um, and that's why you use the Lamia medium because you're going to see that darkness and the gray stick through and that's exactly what we want. The next color choice is going to be Rhinox Hide and Lamia medium and we're going to use this on the brown portions we just went over. And we're going to be building this up in a couple of stages with this and then a black coming up next. And we're thinning these paints and we're using the medium because it's really going to give us that nice um, opaque transparency that we're looking for with the color because these are obviously Rhinox Hide is a darker color but we're building that up so when it dries you can kind of see the undertone through it already. <clears throat> we're then going to use some Abaddon Black 50-50 mixed with some Lamia Medium and we're going to get the bottom portion of our wing tips throughout the entire inside and outside of our wings. And by doing this, we're gonna be matching that car art where it's a dark black at the bottom. Also, do not forget the tops of the wings. And you don't have to do every single black portion on the wings. You can keep some brown if you want. I just did some of them, not all of them. For the tops of our wings, to include the inside of the wings that are attached to Remy's back, we're gonna be using Corax White. Now I'm specifically picking out 
portions. I'm not going over the entire thing. I am picking out portions of the tops that I want to be painted white. Now, Corex White is a white gray. It is not a pure white, so it's gonna kind of blend in with that tone of that undertone of gray that we, black that we already have. Again, just take your time. Don't go too crazy with it, but follow along with what I'm doing in the video, and if you have to stop and go back, do that. Now it looks a little rough right now, but we're gonna kind of clean that up. We're gonna use Apothecary White, which is another contrast paint from Citadel, and we're gonna blend those two tones together. We're gonna blend the top part of the white with the brown and the light brown in the middle. So we're just mixing those two together, and what it's gonna do is gonna create some transparency in the actual top and middle portion of our wings. Now to blend those two colors in the middle wings together, we're gonna to use some Agras Dunes, just real quick. And again, we're gonna take our Nolan Oil 50-50 with Lamia Medium, and we're gonna put it on our white portion and let it dry. Once that is dry, we're gonna highlight that back up with some Pallid Witch Flesh on top of the wings, and all the way going down, I'm gonna do some edge highlighting on those wing edges that are at the bottom. Also do not forget the wing tops that are connected to Remy's back. We wanna make sure we get those as well. And that is the wing step. That's that's what I got. I don't know if it's good or if it's okay, but that's what I put together. So hopefully yours looks as good. All right, we'll now focus on Remy herself. Now Remy in the little monster cat raccoon damn thing that's by her feet. I'm sure that thing has a name. I haven't played the game yet. I am actually supposed to start it Thursday with my board gaming group. Um, we're gonna be doing all the skins, starting with Bugman's Glow, our very normal basic skin tone of Bugman's Glow. Um, so don't forget the backside, the legs, hands, face, and the cleavage, which I thought there'd be more on her, because her card art, holy hell. For the dress and part of her hair, we're gonna use Mephiston Red. Her skirt slash onesie, or I don't know what it is. Uh, we're gonna use Mephiston Red on that, and then we're gonna pick out portions of her hair to paint it as well. Her eyebrows are also red, but I'm gonna save painting her eyebrows until all of the skin highlights are done. That's probably the wrong way to do it, but that's the way I did it, so you can either paint them now, or you can wait. I then also picked out some strands of hair with Amaran Blue. And then we're gonna do some Magos Purple in the next step. If you do not have the Magos Purple, just take some Jean Stiller Purple or um, whatever purple you have. It doesn't need to be this. I just wanted to try this out. It's not an exact science. Sometimes I just wanna try things while I'm in the middle of doing them. Um, so this doesn't need to be this because it's a contrast paint. You can use something else. For her headband and the bands around her arms, 
and her gloves. We're gonna be using some Rhinox Hide. Make sure you're thinning it, but you're not using any Lamia Medium like we did before, just straight up Rhinox Hide. For the spell book or whatever the hell it is she's holding, we're using Athromatic Blue, which is another contrast paint. This is almost gonna be a one and done on this thing. It works so well with that with that zenithal highlighting we did. After that, for her bracer area, we're gonna use Volupus Pink, and then we're gonna use some Nagarath Knight. This is purely just for the handle, for the weapon, um, which matches the card art. You can use black or whatever you want. I'm just trying to go by the art of the card. For our metal bits to include the axe head and the handle portion, the metal belt she's got on, we're gonna be using some Grey Knight's steel. For her shoes, I'm going to be using some deck tan, which is a model color. If you don't have this, if you're using Citadel paints, it's going to be close to Ushab de Bone. I just felt like using deck tan. Sometimes I feel saucy. Sometimes I just don't know what's going on in my brain. And it's just like, hey, use this. Don't use that. I don't know. It is what it is. Or the raccoon cat or rat cat or whatever whatever the hell it is. Uh, we're gonna do a base coat of Corax White on it. Um, this is optional really, because we're gonna hit that with some black and a little bit, but <clears throat> yeah, just use a Corax White on it. And don't forget the tail as well, that is super hard to see. I almost missed it. All right, let's uh, start shading this mf -er. Um We're gonna use Reichland Flush Shade, duh, on the skin portions of our miniature. For our red portion, including all of the hair, just do the whole damn thing with Kerberg Crimson. Um, it's going to blend that hair in rather nicely, actually. I did decide to do a contrast of Blood Angels Red on her skirt slash top or whatever it is. Um, you don't need, specifically need to do this because this is a pure contrast paint. I just wanted to make it a little bit darker red, but you don't need to do this. I right, so we're going to build up the highlights here in the highlight phase in a minute. For our brown pieces to include the leather areas, um, we're going to be using some Agrax Earth Shade. Just be a little careful. You don't want to get too much on the skin or get a lot on it, so just be careful. For all of our metal pieces, to include the chain belt around her waist, we're going to be using some Nolan Oil. We're going to start, actually, after it's all dry, we're going to start with the eyes first. This is the hardest part. We're going to do Abaddon Black. Now, if you're paying attention to the card art, she has like a dark eyeliner underneath her white eyes. So we're going to do that first. I'm trying to make it the same shape as you see on the card, so it's kind of got points on it. We are then going to put some white in the middle of that. You do not want to cover up the entire 
black portion, you just want to get a nice circle. These are anime characters, so they have bigger eyes, so don't be afraid to go bigger on the eyes. Not ginormous, but bigger. Once that is done, we're going to put a little dab of Yurio yellow, because she has yellow eyes. Crazy, I know, right? And then once we have that just little dab of Yurio yellow, we're going to take that Abaddon black again, and we're just going to put a little slit in the middle of those eyes. You're going to see a yellow tinge with a black eyeball basically it's a pain in the butt but it's a necessity once that's done we're gonna head right into the skin now this is probably the most crucial part of our miniature it is our focal point besides the wings and the dress i believe it's imperative that you are thinning your paints in this step make sure you have enough water in there that is thin and we're going to be building them up in layers so obviously the first layer we're going to do is Bugman's Glow, and you want to do a layer, let it dry, do another layer, let it dry, and if you want to do a third layer, do it and let it dry. It only takes a couple seconds to dry, but that's imperative portion. Next we're going to take a 50-50 mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Bugman's Glow, and again we are thinning our paints. We are focusing on the entire skin portion. Now the difference that I'm going to tell you now than what I normally tell you is that we're going to try and get everything. She has a very pale skin tone. And we are taking it from a medium skin tone all the way down to a light skin tone in the end. So we really want to look and work on those contrasting of light to dark. And we're going to get that nice light skin tone. But we have to build those up in layers. We can't just do it all at once. Take a break if you want to real quick and head over to our Instagram. Who, uh, Nerd.Nights. Check it out. No big deal. Um, so make sure you're getting the legs, the arms, the chest area, her face. Pay attention to how I'm doing it on the video. And if you need to go back and rewatch what I'm doing, do that. Don't, don't rush this phase. This is not a rushing part of the miniature. The next paint we're going to use is Cadian Flesh Tone. And again, we're doing the same thing. We are building it up two to three layers of this, really focusing on the bridge of the nose, the chin, the cheekbones, and the tops of the ears. And we are building up those layers of paint to give her that nice pale skin tone that we are looking for. With the skin becoming more pale already, we're gonna just keep going. We're gonna do 50-50 mix of Kislev Flesh and Cadian Flesh Tone. Thin down, of course, and we're doing the same exact thing we've already been doing, layering those paints two to three. Make sure you're letting it dry between each layer and then you're putting another layer on and it's just building it up and constantly building it up. And that's all we're doing until we get to the final color, which is in three steps. The next paint is going to be pure Kizzle of Flesh, thinned of course, and we are again building up those layers, doing the same thing. The face, the legs, the arms, the chest area, you're doing the whole thing. We're not leaving anything um, building up paints or having this area, Bugman's Glow versus this area's Kizzle of Flesh, we're doing the whole thing, making her a nice pale skin. The next is going to be Kizla Flesh and Flay One Flesh 50-50 again, doing the same thing. This is where we're really going to start turning into a pale skin with that Flay One Flesh. Finishing up here in a second. And with our final highlight, we are going to take Flay One Flesh I use this a little bit more sparingly because this is actually a very, very, very pale tone. Tops of the ears, bridge of the nose, a little bit on the cheekbones. If you want to put some on the shoulders, a little bit on the arms. Don't go crazy with it. A little bit on that front thigh just to kind of put that in there a little bit, just to kind of give you that nice 
pale skin, and that's all we're gonna do. We're not gonna take it any further on that skin, but it looks pretty good. We are now gonna start building up our highlights for the skirt slash onesie, whatever the hell it is, um, with Mephiston Red. Now I am thinning this paint, not with Lamia Medium, but a little bit more with water, so it's a little, really, really thin. And I'm gonna be doing the same thing we were doing with the skin. We are gonna be building up the layers of red. I did about three to four layers of red per color that I did, and I am just constantly building them up, doing the raised areas and such. So just follow along what I'm doing and take your time. This is not a sprint, this is a marathon with this miniature because there's so much crap. For the second color, we're going to be doing a 50-50 mix of Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet. Again, thin it very well. Get most of that paint off of your brush. I do it on the back of my hand, and we are doing the raised areas, the breasts, the front of that stomach area, and then the back, that little portion that you can see. I'm also going to use this color on the small portions of hair, as you're going to see here um, soon. I'm just going through and picking out strands of hair. Now we're going to take some pure Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to do the same thing, building up those layers. I did about three to four layers of this specific color on the red portions and you're going to see the brightness of the top layer of the evil suns versus the recesses that it's going to be this the Mephiston red with the contrast. Now to make our little white accent of the top of the dress. This is all going to be freehand so be very very careful get a nice steady posture and get this going we're going to do the top portions of where the breasts are going down to the bottom where the front area meets together i guess and then we're going to have a piece that comes out on the right side of the breast so just follow along and take your time do not rush this step because this could ruin the miniature as far as putting white everywhere it's hard to get white out once you've already painted over with the other one don't forget to put two little white buttons if you're looking at it on the left side all right to highlight up our silver areas we're going to use some ruined fang steel nothing too crazy here um, just the, the chain belt that she has, the portions of the axe, and the butt end of our axe. We're going to highlight up our hair again with our Armin Blue. Um, we're just picking out strands of hair um, in the front and along the back side of our head. And we're also going to use this for the book. We're going to do a little edge highlighting on the book. Nothing too crazy. Just kind of give it a two-tone look. You don't really necessarily need to do this on the book because I think it looks fine with the contrast, the white underneath. But just in case you want to do it, you can. And to highlight up our hair, we're going to use some Jean Steeler Purple. Again, just picking out strands. Purple. It can even be in a different strand of hair. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just you want those coloration differences.
For our leather pieces, we're going to be using a 50-50 mix of Rhinox Hide and Gorthor Brown. And we're just going to go over that leather area with this. We don't want to try and brighten it up too much because the card art specifically shows that it's pretty meh. Basically like Rhinox Hide. So we're not going to go too crazy on it. We're just going to do real simple. We're going to do one layer of this and then we're going to do a second layer and that second layer is going to consist of one more brush full so not a 50 50 mix but one more brush full of our gorthor brown and our rhinox hide and gorthor brown mix and we're going to just going to use that second layer just to kind of brighten up just a little bit but nothing too crazy For her lips, we're going to do a little bit of Screamer Pink, just a little dab. Don't If you don't even feel comfortable doing this because it's kind of small, don't do it. But that's all I'm doing. For the right hand side, that is the pink area, the bracer, I'm going to do a very watered down thing of Pink Horror and then I'm going to basically dab it all off and kind of let that sink in there. You don't have to do that, I just wanted to do it, not a big deal. And then we're going to take our Deck Tan again or if you use Ushabdi Bone, whatever you used. And we're going to redo our shoes and we're gonna go over all the raised areas. The recesses do not need to have paint in them. With Remy all done, we're gonna get on to our cat. I'm gonna call it mittens or a raccoon, whatever the hell it is. And we're going to paint basically the whole thing black now, except for the face area. Um, if you want to leave the inside of the ears as they are, because we did get some contrast paint in there or some Nolan oil, then just keep it as is. I am then going to take some ivory and I'm gonna paint the face. Um, and then I'm gonna put some stripes on that back tail area. There's no rhyme or reason for it. I just kind of threw them on there. I, I'm gonna be honest, I really didn't care at this point. Um, I just wanted to get this little rat thing, raccoon or cute little kitten mittens or whatever the hell it is, painted and done. So just follow along with what I am doing there. We are then going to take some Abaddon Black and fill in our backstop for our eyes. Then you're going to take our white again and put our little white eyeballs in there. Not the whole thing, just fill in a nice little circle in between the brown, or sorry, black. Take the black again and put little slits in each eyes. That is gonna be our pupil. And finally, we're gonna use some warp lightning, which is contrast paint, to put a little daub in each eye because he does have green, beautiful eyes. They are stunning, I will say. I really enjoyed the art in this game and this creature was very nice as well. As a finishing touch, I'm gonna to take some of that ivory again, and I'm just gonna do some edge highlighting along those ears to brighten them up a little bit. Nothing crazy, you don't need to do this. I just kinda of give it a little bit more spunk's pizzazz, cause it's kinda of just like, oh, I'm black and white, and green eyes, cool. That's it. And for the base, I'm just gonna take some Sterling Mud from Citadel, which is a technical paint. I'm gonna slap that thing on there. Whatever you're using, it doesn't need to be used this, but make sure you just be careful, because that tail is easy to get over and the shoes are easy to get crap all over, which I end up doing, and it was a pain in the butt to get it off. Once it is completely dry, I'm gonna use some Terminata Stone, and I'm just gonna dry brush it on there real quick. Again, be careful, be cognizant of the shoes and the cat, um, but I'm just gonna dry brush some of that on there to give it some of that contrast look to it. And then finally, when that is done, 
Abaddon Black on the rim of the base, and we are D-U-N, Den. And it does not look too bad. It was kind of a pain in the butt, I'm not going to lie. It was an absolute pain in the, the ass. But it turned out okay. And you know what? Madara is a long game, so you are going to be playing this game for a long time. And you get to enjoy that miniature for the entirety of the game. So you did it. And I'm proud of you. And thank you for sticking along. And thank you for watching. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing and watching. If you are not and you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button. Until next time, paint on.